All right, so let's check out practice 5.2. Checking out the question here. We want to find the length of the missing side. So let's C. And then we want to find all six trig functions. So the first thing that I would do here is draw my own picture that is just of the information that is needed. So we're going to need all sides, and most likely, every time you're dealing with a right triangle, you will want the value for all sides. That's just something, if you got a right triangle, oh, first thing I'm going to do is get all side values. Because once you have all the side values, you can do um, a lot of other things then. So we want to find C. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to get C, because that's going to be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And you'll probably want to pull out your calculator for that. So 20 uh, I'm good with. Uh, 21 is 441. Oops. And that is C squared. Of course, we'll add those together. And then to get C, we'll take the square root of both sides, which is 29. And then that is our hypotenuse. So here go the trig functions. So the first thing to do for the trig functions then is we are going to need to indicate where our angle is so we get the opposite and adjacent correct. So the picture on my math lab has shown us the angle here. So that means looking this way is the opposite. And this is where we'll have the uh, so ka toa. So looking at sine of our angle, it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And my math lab does say to simplify, so we, we should always check the simplify, but just in case, sometimes you might have the right answer, but you didn't simplify it. But we're good right here with 20 over 29. So let's check out cosine. Now cosine is the adjacent, so that's going to be 21, over the hypotenuse. And we'll check for any simplification. There isn't. And then tangent. So there's two ways at this point. We could go about this. We could go about that tangent is the opposite over adjacent. And be done with it. That's our answer. Or we could do the sine over cosine route because we already know these two. And so sine is 20 over 29, and cosine is 21 over 29. So remember back to complex fractions in algebra. Division, so we have our numerator here, 20 over 29. So this main division bar here, division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal of this, which means we just flip it. And 
and then these 29s cancel. And we have 20 over 21, which is what we had before. But I also want to show this route occasionally so you can see it. Sometimes you'll want to use sine over cosine. But overall, 20 over 21. So um, now doing the reciprocal functions here. So going back to our sine, cosine, and tangent, kind of ignore this one here for the moment. Just focus on these. So we're going to go for cosecant. Now we could do this by just looking at a picture. Since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is just the flip of that, the reciprocal. So it's hypotenuse over opposite. And there's another way to think about this, is that cosecant is one over sine, and we already figured out what sine is. So we know this is gonna be one over sine, 20 over 29. And again, division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And so we get 29 over 20, which is what we had already before. But the point is, the bigger point, is there's a pattern here. That once you have sine, cosine is always the reciprocal. So let's go with cosine. The reciprocal there is secant. Well, we have cosine, and it's just the reciprocal, so we just flip these. So when you secant is 29 over 21. Just literally flip them, because that's what the reciprocal means. And then for tangent, reciprocal is cotangent. So we'll just flip these. And now we have all six trig functions. And that's that question. So we got a new one here, different right triangle. And we got suppose ABC. So ABC is telling us the direction. So we're going to go from A to B to C. So suppose this is a right triangle with sides there and a right angle. Find the unknown side length. And then find the values of all the trig functions. So it's the ex exact same problem. They're just wording it differently to see if you can put all the pieces together. And so I would start this the same way as I did the last one. First thing we need to do is find the unknown side. So we got our right triangle. They're telling us side a and C, and if we look at the picture here, they're calling the right leg here A, and they're saying that's 7, and they're calling the hypotenuse 25. So we're missing B. So we have A squared plus B squared equals c squared. And so we got 49 plus b squared 
times 6 or equals 625. And we'll subtract 49 from both sides. And we'll take the square root. And yes, I am using my calculator. So just in case I sound like I'm looking, if I sound like I'm looking at something, <laughs> I am. I'm looking at the calculator. So there we go. We got our side B. All right, so sign B, looking at the picture in my math lab again here, see B is in the upper right, so it'll be up here. I call this B. And so we have to do all six trig functions. So we got the so Katoa. And that'll get us the sine of our B that we're calling it, our angle this time. Now remember the angle always looks at the opposite leg and sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. And then to do the reciprocals, Just flip them all. And I just noticed I started using theta again because theta is so common to use, but they are technically using B here. And so there's all six trig functions. And I'll enter them in. So I'm at cotangent. And that is everything for that question. So we got another right triangle. And see what the question is using the triangle. Evaluate the following expression, sine theta. I mean, uh, sine 30 degrees. I uh, was just looking at this. They're saying to rationalize the denominator. And uh, we'll definitely go through that if it comes to that in this problem. So let's check it out. We get our picture, and the 90 degree angle's there. I know they're asking for 30 degrees, which is right here. So that's our angle of interest there. And then we have the legs and their values. And that's all we need to know for sine of 30. So sine, the opposite over hypotenuse. So this leg is the adjacent to the 30 degree angle.
And that's it for that one. We got next. All right. I have to say that took me a moment because they have these two pictures here. And I'm trying to think, why do they have these two pictures? And they want you to choose. So as the student here, they're giving you these two pictures. And you're supposed to understand one of these is the wrong picture. So I don't think that's made quite clear there. But one of these is wrong. And we get to determine that from what they're asking. So they're asking us for pi over 4. Well, they're ultimately asking for this. Which means we're looking for the pi over 4 angle. And if we look at the picture, we see everything's in degrees. Which means we're going to have to do some conversions here. And so we might as well convert this instead of all the numbers on the triangle. And so remember the conversion here. This is radians. So to get rid of radians, we want that in the denominator, which means we'll have degrees in the numerator. 180 always goes with degrees. Pi always goes with radians. The radians cancel. And I don't know, I know I don't have a radian written here because it's very common not to write that. It's just understood from the context here. So the pi's cancel, left with 180 over 4. And if you do that division there, so 4 is goes in there 16, you're left with 20 left over, and that's 45 degrees. So um, another th simple way of thinking about this is that you just plug 180 in for pi. And there you go. And you can always do that. So even if you got something like 3 pi over 5, you need to convert that and just plug 180 into pi. So anyways, continuing on with this problem, Pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle, which means the first, the left picture here. And then we have to look at our picture. Let me draw it here. Now, another thing that they're being kind of confusing about is we have two 45 degree angles and in this case you can choose either one they both give you the same answer but of course if we're asked well what's the opposite well now we're in real trouble because if you want to pick this as your angle well then you'd say this is the opposite but if you want to pick this as your angle then you would say this is the opposite. I mean, they're still the same number, but what places, positions they are in a triangle here would be different, though. So either way, tangent is opposite. So the opposite in both cases is the number 1 over adjacent, which in both cases is also going to be 1, which equals 1. And that is that question. So we have information given. We have the ratio for sine. And the ratio for cosine. 
and they just want us to figure out what the rest of these functions are. The other six, the other four big functions here. So the right triangle is always something good to draw whenever you're using it. Because we can look at sine and cosine and, s and we can determine the hypotenuse is 17. Now we have to choose one of these positions to be theta. It actually doesn't matter as long as you use that same position through the rest of the problem, you're okay. But I'll choose this position here. And if we do that, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this position here means opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine is adjacent, which would then be this leg. And now we have all the values for our right triangle. And now we can answer, this picture here will answer all trig functions. So once we have this picture, we can answer all the other four. Let's do tangent. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Let's do cosecant. Now you know cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And I'll plug those in. All right, so I entered all those in. And that was the end of the question, those six trig functions. Now, there is a, uh, something I do want to say here that I know it does say use identities. So this is most likely referring to the Pythagorean identities where we talked about one in the video lecture. And there are two other ones, and they have their uses that we will encounter. But at this moment, I think it's better if you understand first what this picture is, especially the right triangle. Once we have all of these legs, we know all six of the trig functions then. So if you're ever asked something about trig functions, of, you, I, don't, well, I don't know if that's the first thing you want to do, but something very helpful is to think about the right triangle. So now this one is specifically saying, use this Pythagorean identity. Let's check that out. And so with the Pythagorean theorem here, this notation, sine, and then all of a sudden you get to superscript 2, does mean sine squared, which specifically means this. So uh, this superscript is a shorthand notation for doing this. And that's important here to make sure you handle the fraction correctly when you plug sine into here. And we'll subtract 36 over 49 from both sides and find a common denominator, so one is 49 over 49. So 49 minus 36. And that is cosine squared. 
Now to get cosine, we'll need to take the square root of both sides. Now recall that if you have four, take the square root, you can have two times, let me erase that again, you have plus or minus two, and what I mean by that is remember four, when you're looking for the solution here, you're looking for a number that times itself gives four. So positive two works as well as negative two. Negative two times negative two gets us this four. So the square root, remember, is a number that multiplied by itself that gets us that number. And that's the same case over here. When we take the square root, there is a plus and minus solution. Now the square root of 13 is a decimal number. A square root of 49, however, is seven. And so we do need to be aware of these plus and minus values. Now, how are we gonna know which to choose? Well, that lies in the very start of what they're saying. So they're saying that the angle theta is acute. So if we look at just a coordinate system, acute means it's somewhere here. And all of these values are positive. So this is a positive number. That's a positive number. This is a positive number. We know sine is opposite, which is six, and the hypotenuse is seven. And so the number that goes here is going to be the positive. Now, I'm gonna take this picture here and just give myself some more paper. I just wanna think about this for a moment because this will be useful going forward with how to deal with angles. Is that square root of 13 over seven, that's also positive if our right triangle would be down here. What's different now though, is we would consider this then a minus six. Because now we're going down in the negative numbers. Now we know it's not a minus six because my math lab specifically gives us a positive six. So we know it's not here. But my point is both of these give the positive value for our answer. So these are two possibilities, but then the information from the problem tells us it's this, it's this one. Now this is a further point on this. Let's say we take our rectangle and we shift it all the way over here. So we still have our hypotenuse of seven. Now this is going up, so this is positive. So our six is positive again. But now going this direction is negative. And so now we'll get that minus part. And this minus part will also be four the rectangle that goes down here. So our hypotenuse is seven. Now we have minus square root of 13 of seven, and now we have a minus six as well. So this is how to handle all the quadrants. So here's quadrant one, here's quadrant two, here's quadrant three, and quadrant four. Oops, just can't get all that in there. So overall, our answer here is the positive value. And let's check the next question.
So use an identity, find a value of these expressions. Don't use a calculator. All right, so this problem uh, got in under my radar here. Uh, this has to do with co-functions, which this section does mention, but I did not in the lecture video because I was going to talk about this when we start to focus more in on the graphs. I thought it would be more useful there. So you may not see this right now, and that's because I got rid of it. Let's check out this one. And by the way, we will get to co-functions. I just want to do that more when we start looking at the graph. I think it'll make more sense there. So let's check out this, use a calculator. Now, what are these going to be testing? And make sure you know how to put your calculator into the right mode. So we have degrees. So I'm going to hit my mode button and scroll down to where it says angle and change that to degree. And now I will hit the sign button and hit 21 in there and see what I get. I'm just going to write out what I'm seeing here. 358368. And my math lab wants four decimal places. So we're looking at the three, six will round that up. Oops, I made a, um, I, <laughs> I saw the eight, thought my hand would write that five there, but it didn't. And let's check out the next one. So same deal, and it's in degrees. Let's punch this in using a tangent button. And I'm just going to write out what I see here. And what are we looking for? Four decimal places. So we're looking at the eight. The five will round that up. Uh, radian. Certainly not in radian. That's definitely one point one seven zero eight five. Oh. Make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. What? Really? All right, well, that's not correct. But uh, I guess for science, I will put my calculator into radian mode and put a degree into that, which is incorrect. So, um... I'm doing this in radian mode. We want four decimal places. So the nine, four does not change that. And so they're going to tell me then. Okay, I will be back. All right, well, you can see the uh, radiant answer is clearly wrong. Uh, they're saying the correct answer here is uh, 1.1708. So you can see I have, I have that, but the five rounds this up. And uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about what's happened here. Um, I mean, I get it. It's an attention to detail thing. And knowing something about your technology, which are all important things. Um, so, well, what's happening here is I have my calculator set to display six decimal places. So you can see this answer here, 358, 368. It displayed six decimal places. Um, but as you get 
into the ones and tens position here to the left of the decimal. Uh, the calculator is also counting that as a decimal place. And so I ended up losing something after the five. And if I go back to the calculator and increase the number of decimals it shows, I will now get this number. So you can see actually the calculator rounded for me in that position. And that just happens to change whether you put an eight or a nine here. And so a lot of things converge here to have this one eight be a nine difference. So overall, you should know how your technology works. Attention to detail is absolutely important. Um, it is good to remember that sometimes you're kind of, I mean, there's actually even more decimal places here. It's good to know those type of things. I think it's a little unfortunate to get an answer wrong because of this. So that's why I'm not quite sure what I feel about the way this just worked here. But there's the answer. It is technically 1.1708 once you show more decimal places on your calculator. So you can see the 8 no longer rounds down because the 4 will keep that an 8. And so then there is the correct answer. Now, um, their comment that said make sure it's in radians was definitely wrong. So uh, I've sent them something on it. And the math had's pretty good about fixing stuff. So let's check, the next, check out the next one. So find the measure of this right triangle whose length is de designated by a lowercase letter, all right? They just couldn't tell us A. Um, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a direct person. You want me to find A? Well, then just straight up tell me, <laughs> find A. <laughs> and so I'm drawing in our picture what are the important things to answer this question? What is A? So we have to look at our pieces. We've got the opposite from our angle. Remember, the angle always looks at the opposite. So we've got an opposite and we've got an adjacent. And you want to choose a trig function that has these two. And most people will probably go to tangent. I uh, could also use cotangent. That's a terrible A. And so to solve for A, we'll multiply both sides by 160. And now this one wants us to round to the nearest whole number. So we most likely won't run into the same problem as we did last time because we won't have to round to four decimal places. Let's check this out. And we're in degrees. So let me make sure I'm back in degrees. I am. So we got 160 tangent 35 degrees. And for A, so round to the nearest whole number, zero is not going to change to two, and so we got 112. So we got another one. <laughs> Right triangle again. I kind of like this uh, 
cracks me up a little bit, designated by the lowercase letter. So um, a problem that my math lab is having here is they're using uppercase and lowercase c, which is, um, you know, this is always a challenge versus what you can print on a screen versus what you handwrite, because these two can get lost very easily while you're doing math, which is the capital. Because you know, as you start getting numbers next to it and everything else, you can start losing what the capital is. And so this type of picture that they have drawn is actually very rarely used. Normally what's used instead of capital C is the Greek letter gamma. And normally capital A is an alpha, and then B is beta for these angles. And then you've got your letters here. And we're going to go more into this when we talk more about triangles. We are going to go more into this. But I just want to say for your own sake of labeling things, uh, having a lowercase c and an uppercase c is overall, I would consider, not good to do when you're handwriting things. Because that uppercase c and lowercase c can get confusing very quickly. So normally, and we will start to see gamma more as we get more towards dealing with triangles. So let's see what we got for our picture. And we're looking for C. Um, another thing that's kind of unfortunate with this problem is this capital C is never even used. And so it's just an added useless complication. That's why I'm encouraging you to draw your own picture. Draw what is the useful information and get rid of the fluff. And that's what we have. And we want to find C. Here's our angle. Remember, the angle always looks at the opposite. And, of course, the longest leg is always the hypotenuse. So then you want to think in your head, well, which trig function has opposite and hypotenuse? And probably most people will go for the sine function first. We could also use cosecant. So sine being opposite over hypotenuse and we'll do a little cross multiply so we'll multiply both sides by C and divide by sine over 34 now I know I said cross multiply and then I didn't do it <laughs> um, because I always like to stress that cross multiply isn't it's not that's really not a math operation it's a pattern that arises when you have a situation, but um, you can make mistakes if you just think cross multiply is, is something you do, especially when there's more terms and things on each side. So here's where we'll punch into our calculator. 34 is in degrees. And I'm just going to double check again since, oh no, they're going for, they're going for nearest whole number. So I don't need to get crazy on the, all the decimal numbers I got, I need to show here to satisfy my math lab. So for C, 26, 8, 2, 4. And we're going to round this to the nearest whole number. So the 8 will bring this up to a 27. And let's check the next question. Oh, one of the uh, picture ones. So we got a nice pleasant lake or a pond, a house sitting here. What do they want? Find the distance across the lake. A surveyor took the measurements in the figure shown to find this distance. 
use these measurements to determine how far it is across the lake. Okay, so surveyor went out there with their surveying tools and measured some angles. So in other words, um, stood at point A, used their device to measure a 35 degree angle, walked the distance to C to measure this distance. And so now that you have in this information, we can use some trig to figure out then how far it is to this point B. So our triangle, 35, 550, and we're looking for A. So A is the opposite. 550 is the adjacent. And the function that satisfies that is tangent. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. So to solve for A, we'll multiply both sides by 550 and punch that in the calculator. See what they want? They want nearest whole number. Cool. Again, we have to worry about six decimal places. And this is in degrees. And I'm getting... So the one will keep this a 385 for the nearest whole number. And the last question, another picture one. So a plane rises from takeoff, flies at an angle of eight degrees, the horizontal runway so um, a little bit of an unfortunate picture there because they're telling us we're looking perfectly sideways on the runway yet the plane looks like it's turning so they should have had a perfectly side on view of the plane here so I like the picture but the perspective there's a little off on the plane but let's draw our triangle because uh, they're asking ultimately for C. So we're standing at point A. How far away is the plane? So if we know the plane is at a height of 550 and we measure this angle 8 degrees, how far is the plane actually from us? So let's draw this triangle out. And what do we got? 8 degrees and 550. And we're looking... C. So again, the angle always looks at the, uh, the opposite. C, the longest leg, always our hypotenuse. And then we'll choose a trig function that satisfies those two things. And that would be sine. We get opposite over hypotenuse. And we're going to solve for C so we can do the cross multiplying thing there, which I will do this time now that I said something about cross multiplying. <laughs> and we'll punch that into the calculator. And let's check what they want. They want to round to the nearest foot, to the nearest whole number. So we do have a nine here which will bring the one up to a two. It's around to the nearest foot. Foot uh, is a whole number. And that's everything. I do want to say something really quick with doing these last couple problems we did with this picture and choosing a trig function. This is the quickest path to a solution. But remember, I started by saying, when you're talking about trig functions, it's always good to think about a right triangle and looking for all the pieces. 
And that's something that you can do. And what we're doing right now is actually doing that process. We know 550 because it's given to us from this problem. And what did we just figure out? All of this work, even though we put it in the context of this plane flying off a runway to some goofy angle, what we really did is we solved for another leg of this right triangle. And so the next thing to do would be to solve for this leg. And this number is rounded. So you saw that this is a decimal number that was rounded. And rounded numbers you want to always try to avoid if you're going to find a new number. Which means if we do want to find this leg... We want to try to do it with the numbers given again because we know these are exact with no rounding error. And how would we do that? Let's say we want to find this leg. Well, we still have the same thing. We still have opposite. But now we're looking for the adjacent. And what function satisfies that? Well, that would be tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And now we can cross multiply to solve for A. And I'm just gonna punch that in real quick. So rounding to the nearest foot, 3913. And that would officially complete then all the information for our right triangle. And in a sense, in an, in an overarching theme here of these last problems, this is what we've been doing. This problem here that we just did was to help you get one leg of the right triangle. So overall, when dealing with trig and right triangles, it's, it's almost always good to have the right triangle with all the leg information because then you can do, you can get all the rest of your numbers in with trig function. So these are rounded. Always best to try to use exact information. And there is the practice.